This video is five videos all rolled into one. Like sushi, just raw takes. Coming in hot with that wasabi. There is no B-roll, no Belushi, just a very one-sided carbon-plated conversation. For the five videos, I'm gonna chop them up into chapters so you can just skip around to whichever one you want. The first one's gonna be the SE Elite 4. Number two, what we talk about when we talk about running shoes, which is in reference to the title. Number three is the Primex Strung after 350 miles, AKA the greatest recovery super shoe of all time. Number four, the Alpha Fly 2 after 100 miles. And then number five, we're gonna talk about what super shoe I am running the Woodlands Marathon in. Not what you think. A shock face. First up, the SC Elite V4 first impression. It's big, she thick. It's stable, it's bouncy. It reminds me of like a supersized Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. Though I will say the Puma shoe is bouncier and more nimble. Now the shoe has been out for a little bit. So you've probably already seen other reviews from other shoe tubers who have told you likely that this shoe is not as aggressive as other super shoes. And the rumors are true. It is not. There is no steep drop. There's no rocker. There's nothing that really propels you forward. And that's why it reminds me so much of that Puma shoe. So who is the shoe good for? I'm gonna guess larger runners, bigger runners, because like the more energy that I put into the shoe, the more energy return I get back. Also, I'm gonna say for people who don't really necessarily want a more aggressive shoe from their super shoe, people who are gonna be out there running the marathon for a very long time, because these are leg savers. Since I I am none of those things, I will not be running the Woodlands Marathon in the SE Elite V4. Now, to address the title of this video, what we talk about when we talk about running shoes, which is based on some source material, which I have here, what we talk about when we talk about love is a collection of short stories by Raymond Carver. Interesting fact, there's a short story in here called Why Don't We Dance Anymore? And they turned that into a movie starring Will Ferrell called Everything Must Go. Also, there's a short story in here called What We Talk About When We Talk About Love. Now, if you want to give Raymond Carver a whack, I recommend a short that's not in this book called The Cathedral. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Anyway, what we talk about when we talk about running shoes in 2024, it's not necessarily like the problem with the SC Elite V4, so much as it is just like the evolution of the SC Elite lineup, mirroring that of other running shoe companies and a lot of what we've already seen, which is the SC Elite V4, it's enhanced, it's wider, it's bigger, it's more, more structured, more accessible. <sighs> okay, so this is interesting. I have an analogy. In the movie industry, ideas are weighted by their reach and their marketability, not by the creativity, not how creative an idea is, okay? Not the poignancy, not, not how deep, not, not the meaning, not the award winning, no, by the breadth, by the reach. An idea that appeals to men, to women, to old people and to children. We call that a four quadrant idea. Back to the future, Jurassic Park. Any Marvel movie is automatically already better than the best romantic comedy, than the best sports movie you've ever seen. No matter how much you like The Notebook or Field of Dreams, it's not as good of an idea as Back to the Future. So then how do we determine what a successful movie is? Oh, we have the Oscars, right? The Academy Award, is it the plot? Is it the acting? No, it's the box office, the bottom line. And it's as if now running shoes have gone four quadrants on us. It's more about the broader appeal of a shoe rather than the unique ride or characteristics of it. And to see what I mean, you just have to look to the left or to the right or like the Rebel lineup from the Rebel V3 to the Rebel V4, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 to the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, the Nova Blast 3 to the Nova Blast 4, they get wider, they get bigger, they get more structured, the SC Elite V3 to the SC Elite V4, and, and the list goes on. And on. So these 2024 releases now have broader appeal to the general audience or to your recreational runner. And the problem is, is that I'm a film snob. I'm a Criterion Collection runner. I only watch Wes Anderson movies. I know, I know, that's some hipster bullshit. But also, I'm just kidding, I only liked Rushmore. Anyway, I don't want a safe and structured race day shoe. I want something a little bit more aggressive. I want something a little bit more unstable, a little wily, but that doesn't mean the SE Elite V4 is a bad shoe. It's a good shoe, it's just not for me. Guys, if my wife fell off of a diving board and broke her back, I would put these shoes on and I would run 500 miles and I would run 500 more just to be the guy who ran a thousand miles to go get a doctor 
for my wife who fell off a diving board you know, and broke her back. I'm gonna put a thousand miles in these shoes. The Prime X Shrung, AKA the greatest recovery super shoe of all time. Super recovery shoe of all time. I am always reaching for this shoe. Every easy day, every recovery day, I'm like Thor reaching for his hammer. You seen that one? You seen that movie? My legs want this shoe. My, my mind, I want this shoe. Every part of me wants this shoe. Yo quiero this shoe. Now, in the past, I have compared the Primax Strong to the SE Trainer and to the Nike Invincible because the use cases for all three of those shoes are largely very similar. You could take them for easy days or recovery runs, but the shoes have the flexibility to pick up the pace. The main difference between those two shoes and this shoe is the foam. So the foam and the SE Trainer and the Nike Invincible are very dense and have a lot of bounce. But as you can see in the Primax Strong here, it's a little bit softer, which which means when my foot lands, it catches me. It's 50 millimeters of stack. And then I'm allowed to roll through and it's got a stiff plate here and push off. So I can pick up the pace, but it catches me in a way that the other shoes do not. You know what the shoe is like actually is the Boston 12, except you, you take the Boston 12 and you inject it with some PEDs and, and feed it some GMOs. And then you get this monster. You go a monster. More foam, better foam, better upper, better outsole, better shoe, double the cost. The price, never have I ever paid $200 for a shoe and thought to myself, you know what? That was worth it until this shoe. Now it retails at 300, but I got it for only 200. And I did not feel good about that at the time, but you know what? I have no regrets, frankly. I have no regrets. I do it again. Okay, video three, the Alpha Fly 2.0. I'm gonna drop it to you like this. Number one, it's the GOAT. It's a Hall of Famer. Alpha Fly 2.0 is the talentless son. Ouch. Okay, that's a little bit harsh. It's still an all-star, a McDonald's All-American. It's not a Hall of Famer, right? So you've got like the tier, the top tier of super shoes, and it's like only the Alpha Fly one, and maybe the three, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. And then you have like all the other super shoes in tier two, second tier, right? That's where the Alpha Fly 2 is. It's with its cousins. It's just, it's right there, second class. So the Alpha Fly 2.0, is it a super shoe? Yes, but is it a cheater shoe? No, and let's be honest, we really probably all just want that cheater shoe, that super aggressive, something that barks at us and pushes us, even when we're tired, it forces us to go for like an overly invested father. Okay, not abusive, right? But just maybe someone who's quite apparently living vicariously through his son. So what happened with the Alpha Fly 2 is that it, it lost its edge, it's lost its aggressiveness. It's still super bouncy, bath. Now, why is that? I don't know, I'm not a shoe scientist or whatever, but I know I did hear something from Kafuzi in a live stream that made a lot of sense to me. And he said for him, when he was running, he felt like the AirPods were a little too far back, right? Like they didn't propel him forward. And, and I felt the same thing at like, I'm up, but I'm not forward with the bounce. So it could be just the placement of the pods. Either way, it's not aggressive. Okay, and lastly, for my super shoe for the Woodlands Marathon, not what you think it's gonna be. My, one of my favorite super shoes of all time. It's also on sale right now, so you can get it too. And, and that part blows my mind that it's on sale because I follow this channel, Yuwana, and I'll leave his link there. He posts weekly shoe deals regularly, and if you go to his website, you can click, they'll send you an email. You'll get weekly shoe deals all the time, and I, he missed this one. So I'm gonna let them know about it right now. Pretend drum roll. The Adidas Adios Pro 2 on sale, $129 on Amazon. I'm gonna put a link below. So if you do want the shoes, please use the link. It will help support the channel. It's an affiliate link. Now, what we talk about when we talk about shoes is that this shoe got four quadrants up to the Adios Pro 3, which is still a really good shoe. It got wider, the foam is wonderful. I like the Adios Pro 3, but give me that two quadrant, something more aggressive, something less stable, something that needs therapy. Because it's unstable, no? Okay, I'll cut it. Give me the Adios Pro 2. Bonus video number six, and I promise I'm not gonna cut the video off right now. I wanna cover a big red flag that I noticed when watching videos, and I just have to tell you about it. Anytime you hear the following phrase, 
workhorse. Okay, bye, bye. Workhorse means not at all special, incredibly average. Mario. Nobody is intentionally picking a workhorse, okay? Like those are just like accidental swipe rights. And I'm not so sure I even know what that means, okay? Because I'm too old. So let's just please leave workhorse out of your shoe reviews. Actually, keep it. That way I know I can see the red flag and I'll never have to buy the New Balance 880. Here comes the end, guys, in three,